beginning, as a, as a fresh start, as a way to, to, to get some of the things of the past and make some adjustments and make some changes. If you don't, uh, uh, don't realize that the world is still doing that, just drive by any of the gyms in town. Uh, drive by Planet Fitness or, or Anytime Fitness, or, uh, and, and especially during the month of January, and they are packed out. Why? Because people think that if I just start by, I'm going to start something new, I'm going to start something fresh. But the challenge is that unless there is something greater than just that desire, uh, then, then usually by February, the gyms are empty again. Uh, you know, people just stop going because they just didn't make a full, uh, full change. And so I want to give you four things in the next three weeks. I'm, I, we started last week. If you weren't here last week and the weather was bad and things were really slow and, and so forth, and I understand, but we'll just recover, recap just a little bit on that. There'll be five things in this, in this, in this series that, that I'm calling this a, a revolutionary resolution. In other words, it will give you a resolution that you will revolutionize your life. It will revolutionize things in your life if you begin to put them into practice. Number one that we talked about last week is that you got to get over the past. You can't take, you can't uh, uh, live fully in the present. You cannot live and grasp your future if you got a, 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 an arm full and a hand full and a heart full of the problems of yesterday and the hurts and the anxieties of yesterday. It's important that you let those regrets go. It's important that you let those hurts go. It's important that you let those mistakes go. It's important that you don't let those things steal the dream that God's placed in you. You can't let Satan use your past uh, to, to control your present or to dictate your future. You have to let that go. And sometimes you have to just get over it. I like what one person says, when you have a problem in the past, just go buy a ladder and get over it. <laughs> just climb the ladder and get over it. Sometimes, listen, I know that it's easier to say than it is to do, but I'm telling you, with the power of the Holy Ghost, there's nothing that's impossible. That any hurt, any difficulty, any challenge, any problem in the past can be dealt with, and your heart can heal, and your psychological efforts can work, and your mind can heal, and you don't have to drag that stuff in to the next phase, the next part of your life. And so we had an altar call and the altar was full and I believe that we had some, some, some real successes and some things that people let some things go. But I believe that more than just letting the past go and it's important that we have to do that. There's some things that we have to do on a positive end uh, and, and today I want to, uh, the title of uh, I guess today's message is reviving a spirit of expectancy. You see, too often we've gotten, and you know, I, I, I turned 66 years old on Monday. Uh, uh, and, and praise the Lord, I feel good. Uh, now, this Sunday I was a little bit under the weather, but praise God, it doesn't last real long. And so I turned 66, and you know, I look across, and most of my classmates from high school and college are all retiring, and they're all just, you know, going out to pasture, doing what they think they want to do. And, 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 and I just say, God, uh, uh, is there retirement in my future? He said, no, not yet. And, and, and so you got you ain't getting rid of me, amen. And so I, I just believe there's a whole lot of fire left in these these bones. I won't even call them old bones. Glory to God. There's a whole lot of fire left in this in this body. But I, I, I'm just saying that to to say that there's some times when uh, in in life we we get disillusioned. 
We get di- dis- dis- uh, discouraged. Uh, we get delayed. Things get sidetracked. You got a, a dream as a young man, a plan as a young man, and some things as a young woman that God, you feel like God wants to do. And, and as you get older and things just don't seem to be happening anytime soon, and it just seems like, oh heck, what's the use? Uh, what, what, what is, what's the use to keep pressing on? What What's the use of keep praying? What's the use of continuing to spend time in the Word? Listen, I don't know if you know this or not, but there are thousands of people just in this city who are born again and they stay home on weekends because they are, they've become disillusioned with church, disillusioned with the gospel, disillusioned with, 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 with just trying to, to do the same thing over and over again. And not see any different results. I'm telling you, it's time that the body of Christ revives that spirit of expectancy, that spirit of excitement, that spirit of hope that God has placed on the inside of us. It's not time just to say, oh well, when I die, I'll go to heaven and I'm just going to retire from going to church. No, it's not the time to get lukewarm But because when we do that, then we fall right in into the trap of Satan and the, and the enemy who tries to come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And if he can discourage you, and he can disillusion you, and he can get you to, to stay home on Sunday morning or on Wednesday night and just say, oh, well, you know, I'm born again, and I'll just do what I have to do, and I'm just going to get by. Listen, you're falling right in to the hands of the enemy. Excuse me if I'm getting excited. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11 says that, God says, I know the plans that I have towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace are plans of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Listen, God is not looking for half-hearted believers who are half-heartedly seeking him. He's looking for people who are going to seek him with their whole heart. Second Chronicles chapter, I want to say 29, says that, that God, the eyes of the Lord, look to and fro over the whole earth, looking for those whose hearts are completely his, then he might show himself strong on their behalf. God's plan does not change. Listen, the word says God doesn't change. His plan doesn't change. His word doesn't change. His plan for your life hasn't changed. His plan for living glory church hasn't changed. It may be delayed. It may be, dis- we may be disillusioned with some of the things. It may be taken longer than we thought it would take. But I'm telling you, when you stay fast and you stand fast on God's word, all things are possible and God's plan for you has not changed. Amen. It's he still wants to give you a future and a hope. Listen, his word hasn't changed. If he said that by his stripes you were healed, then by God, by his stripes you are healed. Now you may be going through some symptoms and you may have some issues in your body, but it still does not negate the plan of God. You might be thinking, man, my finances took a hit in 2017. My finances have taken a hit. This whole economy in this area has taken a hit. God still says, I want to supply all your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You might have taken a hit in your finances and things might not be looking up that you thought they'd be looking up, but God's word doesn't change. He's still the supplier of every need. He's still the healer of everybody. He's still the one who gives you peace. He's still the one that his plans don't 
change. Glory to God. And it's time that you and I begin to cause our expectancy to rise up again to the level that it once was. I tell you, I, I know that sometimes we get excited. And I'm not talking about just an excitement. I'm not talking about just an emotional high. I'm talking about something on the inside of me that knows that I'm rooted in God's Word. And because I'm rooted in God's God's word. There's an expectation that God's word does not lie and God's, God's plan cannot be thwarted. There's a, pre, there's a passage in Job chapter 14. And, and I don't preach a whole lot from Job, but, but there's, there's this one passage that I just think is incredible. And, and it, verse 9, Job is talking to his friends, he said, for there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its roots may grow old in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. I'm telling you this morning that maybe 2017, a 15, 16, 17, it may look like your plant has died. It may look like the plan of God has died. It may look like it has withered up. It may not look like there's any prosperity. But I'm telling you, if your roots are still planted in God, your roots are still planted in the Word, your roots are still planted that the hint of water water, the set of water. The Holy Ghost is a type of the water. And when the Holy Ghost begins to get a hold of that root that's still planted in the Word, still solid in the Word, and it looks like there's nothing that God's plan for you is coming to pass. But if you stay rooted in the Word, God says, I will cause that water to begin to revive you, revive your life, revive your body body, revive your finances, revive your relationships, so that you got to understand that there is a revival on the precipice of your life at this moment. If you stay rooted in the Word, then Satan cannot steal, kill, and destroy beyond where you are rooted in, and God says, I will bring it back to life. In, in, in 2001, Hurricane Lily came through South Louisiana. It's the last one that came real close uh, to us. He went through Erath and through Abbeville. And, and you know, uh, Pastor B said, are we going to board up our house and, 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 and leave town and go north? And, and I said, man, you know, we've, we've weathered all of those hurricanes as a kid. Uh, Hurricane Camille and Hurricane Audrey and Hurricane uh, all, I don't know all of them, uh, in, in Mama's little wood frame two-bedroom house, and, and I'm living in a brick home. I don't think we're going anywhere. And so that, that night, I mean, uh, late in the afternoon, this thing is wailing, and I thought, maybe we should have left. But I looked out my front yard, and, and, and there was this, I've got, I planted two oak trees, live oak trees. Every, every house I've lived in, I've planted some live oak trees uh, in those properties. And I tell you, some of them are gorgeous today. And, and, and so it uh, must have been a twister or something. And, and it took one of them, and the trunk was probably about this big. And it took it, and it took the top of it, you know, like you would take broccoli and cut the top off of the broccoli. And it rolled that thing around my front yard. And I said, Lord, just, just settle that, that tree down somewhere, not against my house. And, 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 and the winds turned in such a way that it just shoved right into my boat shed, right up, right up against my boat and didn't do any damage. It took me a week to get it out of there. But uh, uh, we finally cut it. And, and so when I got out and you know, I looked at this, this, this tree, 
this tree was this big and at about nine feet it was just all frazzled it was all frayed and I thought what am I gonna do with this but I remembered that years ago before that I had a tree that was planted too close to one of our buildings and I had I dug it up and I took it and it was just about two inches big and I took that tree and I dug it up and I cut the top completely off and I planted it out in the pasture and my kids used to look at it and say daddy where's the other pole for the volleyball net I said what do you mean the other pole for the volleyball net yeah you put a pole out there for the volleyball net but but you only got one pole where's the other pole and I got to thinking you know I just left it alone and I just made sure that the grass and the weeds weren't in. And you know, the next year, that little pole began to have little spuds, little sprouts. And today, that tree, I had to trim it just recently because it was, it's, it's grown. And so getting back to the tree in 2001, I said, you know, if, if, if that other tree came back, this one's still planted. As long as I don't disturb the root system, this plant's gonna come back. And today, if you look at my front yard, you look at it from the road, I've got two beautiful oak trees in my front yard, and from a distance, you would never know which one of those almost lost its life because it has come back. What am I telling you that for? As long as you stay planted, in the, in the Word of God, it doesn't matter how much Satan tries to kill, to steal, or destroy, the plan of God for your life will come to pass. You've got to know Isaiah chapter 54 says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now watch this. I, I love this. Proverbs 24 verse 16. And I'm going to read this from the Message Bible. It says, no matter how many times you trip them up, God loyal people won't stay down long. Soon, they will be back up on their feet. You know, you may be getting, you may have gotten knocked down in 2017. You may have gotten knocked off your feet because of the economy, because of one thing or another, because of an attack on your life. You may have gotten knocked down, but God says if you're loyal to Him, it won't take long before the Holy Ghost will energize you again and you stand back up on your feet and say, I am stronger today than I was was before the attack and I, you got to know that when Satan comes he's trying to kill steal and destroy but I'm telling you with the Holy Ghost on your side and if you're planted in the Word of God when you come back up you become a force to be reckoned with on planet earth because God wants you to be a witness in your life in your family listen his plan has not changed for your family his plan has not changed. The word did not erase the fact that God is long suffering and He's willing that no one should perish. He's not. <coughs> Excuse me. He's not willing that any should perish, but that everyone should come to eternal life. Now you realize that maybe your children or maybe your relatives and maybe some of the people you know aren't serving God, but listen, God's plan is still for them to serve Him. And so don't give up on them just because it looks like they've gotten hard. Don't give up on them just because they're living like the world. Don't give up on them because God hasn't changed His plan for them. And we got to continue to pray for them. Continue to believe God for them. Number two is, is that this, this expectancy, this hope that's based on God's Word becomes a blueprint for the plan of God in your life. You, you know, we've said that uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 
uh, says that now faith is the is the substance of things what hoped for the evidence of things not seen when you've got a blueprint you've got something that you can give substance to uh, when we built this this facility I had engineers put together some blueprints so, so that we could know what the builders were supposed to do and, and how to build this and how to put the slab together and how to put all the wiring under and how to do all of the electrical work and all of the plumbing work and, and, and all of that was all part of it. And before the building was built, I could see it on the inside of me because I had this blueprint. God's Word becomes your blueprint and it gives the hope that yes, that, that this this, this word says that by his stripes I, I, I'm healed. And, and King David says, Father, remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. I hope in your word. You are my hope. It becomes that, that, that blueprint on the inside of me. It becomes the comfort in my affliction. That though I may not see it in the natural, I see it on the inside. I may not see all of the things that I'm believing God for in the natural with my natural eyes, but with my spiritual eyes, I see it because it's real. Uh, James said it this way, that when I look into the mirror of the Word, that I'm supposed to let the Word reflect off of me so that I never forget what I look like. I never forget what God says belongs to me. It becomes a blueprint down on the inside of me. Now, the, the blueprint says that, that by His stripes, I am, I'm healed, glory to God. And, and I may be going through some symptoms, may have some issues, but it does not discount the word that says I am healed heading towards my healing. I, I, I may have some financial issues, but I am a prosperous man heading towards my money that God says I'm going to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. So you have to realize that sometimes there is a natural hope out there that we see. And sometimes through, through life and, and, and through the issues of life and through the difficulties of life and through the longevity and the time that it takes for some things to come to pass, it may seem that that hope begins to wane and that picture begins to lessen and that blueprint begins, be, begins to, to be not as as vibrant as it once were but but as it once was but in Romans chapter 4 it says that there was a man by the name of Abraham it says that contrary to hope in hope believed there was a deeper hope on the inside of him that went beyond just what he could see with his natural eyes what more than he could see with his natural hands in fact it says that he in hope Contrary to hope, he believed what God said. And God told him over and over and over again for 25 years, God kept telling him, you are, going, you are the father of a multitude. And, and over and over again, I believe that when, the, when, when, when the, 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 the blueprint would begin to fade and the hope of the natural would begin to fade, God would come back around and say, I'm calling you the father of a multitude. And I'm telling you that to say this, that there's some times when it seems like the blueprint is fading and the hope is fading. Get back to the word and get back to the word of God so it can re freshen that hope on the inside of you. Begin to reprint that thing on the inside of you so that when you walk away, you don't forget what you look like. You don't forget that God said those things in his word. And it says, you know, one translation, it's interesting because, you know, you get one translation says one thing and the other one says another thing. But, but I, I believe it really doesn't matter. One translation says he didn't consider his body. Another translation said, he considered his body as good as dead. And so it really doesn't matter. 
Because you see, it's not whether you consider, you don't consider it or you do consider it. What it is, what's important is that you consider the word greater than what you see. Whether you consider it, you can look at it and say, well, you know, I'm 90 years old and, and I can't have any kids. Uh, uh, I haven't had any kids when I was, when I was younger. And, and you look at his wife and his wife didn't have any children. Now, Abram did have a son at the age of 75. His name is Ishmael and created a whole issue for the whole world. But, but that's, that's a whole other story. Uh, but but his, his wife couldn't have any children, didn't have any children in her 20s and her 30s. Now she's in her 90s and, and, and God could, he could look at it and say wow how is this ever going to happen but the word says he didn't consider it and even if he did consider it what he did was bring to the forefront of his thinking and what he considered was what God said in his word God can't lie and if God said it he's going to bring it to pass I don't know how he's going to do it I don't know how me and this 80 is 70 year old 90 year old woman are going to have some uh, have some fun, uh, ha have, some, ha have some interaction, and, and, and a child's going to come out of this, but glory to God, it's going to happen. And so sometimes we may not know how God's going to do it, but we got to consider the Word above the circumstances. Now, 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 now I, I like this verse of Scripture from the New Century Translation. Job says this, my friends all laugh at me when I call on God and expect Him to answer me. They laugh at me even though I am right and innocent. I read that. And, and you know, maybe, maybe you haven't had anybody laugh at you. When you, when you just said, God said that this is what I'm supposed to do. God said that this is how I'm supposed to live. God said that this is how I'm supposed to conduct my life. God said I'm supposed to walk in love. Don't fry on me again. And you see, sometimes people who do not have a spiritual discernment may laugh at you and ridicule you because you're asking God, you're, you're, you're calling on God, and you expect God to, to respond. You respect, you live your life in such a way that it honors God and it pleases God. And, and some might say, well, you know, you just, God doesn't do that kind of stuff anymore. But I'm telling you, they can laugh at you all they want. But there's coming a time when he who laughs last, laughs and last and last and last. So let them laugh all they want. Because when God begins to move in your life and begins to answer your prayers and, and, and they begin to see uh, what God is doing, their, their laughter is going to stop. Amen? Because it's not a matter of them ridiculing at a moment. It's a matter of us staying firm and staying right before God. Number three. Number one, we said that God's plan doesn't change. God doesn't change. Number two, hope that expectancy is a blueprint in our spirit of what God intends to come to pass in our life. And number three, this hope, this spirit of expectancy, this spirit of hope, this spirit of ex excitement, this spirit of anticipation of God answering prayer, 
God doing something, bringing things to pass in my life, becomes an anchor in my life. It becomes an anchor when the storms are raging and the violence is raging and, and, and the things out there are happening. Uh, God said His Word helps us to stay steadfast, to stay secure, to stay immovable, to be, to be steady, and to keep going one step at a time. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, he says, This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us into the curtain of God's inner sanctuary. That anchor holds us in place when, when, when the issues of life get overwhelming. It holds us in a place secure. Um, I, I take my boat out to Big Lake on occasion, and I, I, I'm, I'm being accused of boat abuse because uh, I haven't had a chance to do much fishing over the last year. Uh, boat neglect, let me put it that way. Uh, and so we went out, and, and uh, 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 I, I took a, uh, the Luna boys, and, and Mark and I went out, and it was cold uh, uh, late, late December, and we didn't catch anything, but, you know, we... we we, we, we caught memories. Um, and so one of the things that we had to do was you take the, you take the anchor and uh, because of the wind was strong and, and there were some waves and we threw the anchor overboard and, and the anchor would, would, uh, would, would try to grab and, and every, you know, we'd leave it and, and the, boat would, the boat would shift and would move and so I'd have to start the boat and we, we'd get another spot and throw the anchor back in. And I think we had to do that like three times before the anchor actually got caught and, and, and stuck on, on a rock. And, and so the challenge is that your anchor has got to be in something that is immovable. Your anchor has to be in something that is steady and, 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 and worthy of that anchor catching it. If, if our hope is based in the stock market, based in this president, based, based in our, our government, based on our law enforcement, if our anchor is based on things in the natural, then, then that anchor is not going to stay steadfast. It's not going to stay immovable because uh, those people will change and, 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 and they're not going to be the same uh, in, in a few years from now. And, and their, their doctrines and their, their ideologies can change. But I'm telling you, if you base your, your hope upon God's Word, and then it doesn't matter who's in the political scene. It doesn't matter who's in the political office. It doesn't matter which party party is in political power. It doesn't matter what the stock market does. It doesn't matter what the economy does. What matters is that I'm, I, I, I'm anchored on the Word of God and that my God is the one, is my source, and He's my supplier, and, and He's the one that's going to bring me to, to the place where I need to be. And so that hope becomes a, a foundational undergirding, a, 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 a foundational underlying quality that enables me to stand, enables me to withstand, it enables me to overcome, it enables me to, to be all that God wants me to be. And so that hope, that expectancy, that excitement is, is the anchor for my soul, the anchor for my from my mind because when I look at the challenges all around us it's, it's, it's hard n not to be swayed one way or another w when I see some of the issues that's facing our country facing our government facing our, our economy it's, it's difficult not to get worried. And yet the Bible says to be anxious for nothing and putting all those cares upon Him. Amen? And so my hope has to be anchored in something that is greater 
than what I can see with my natural eyes. Jeremiah chapter 17 is, is, is a, uh, from the New, New Living Translation, it, it, it's a sobering passage of Scripture. It says, this is what the Lord says. This is Jeremiah 17, verse 5 to 8, New Living Translation. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They live life in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salty land. I don't like that. I don't want that to be me. That's not me. And that's not the life that God has and the plan that God has for me. But look at verse 7. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and their confidence. They are like trees. I don't know why some messages just have a whole lot of trees in them. Planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green <laughs> and they never stop producing fruit. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but that's my picture. Glory to God. That's the picture of you. That's a picture of living glory church. Not some withered up shrub and living in a salty land, but a tree planted by rivers of waters and bearing fruit even in old age. Glory to God. Now, I don't consider myself old, but I tell you, when I look at the church world and there are some people that says, you know, I'm, I'm past my age. I am too old. No, they've got it all mixed up. Glory to God. I'm planted by a river, and that solid river of life flows up through me, flows up through you. Glory to God. And you're going to produce fruit in your old age. Hallelujah. God's plan for you didn't change. God's word didn't change. God's blueprint, that hope is a blueprint so that your faith can work. That hope becomes an anchor for your soul. Now, <clears throat> I'm not just talking about an emotional thing. Because it's more than just an emotional excitement. You know, sometimes you get real excited, get real emotional about things, and then in a little while it just kind of wanes because the excitement's gone. Becomes old. Becomes old hat. My prayer for you is in from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It says, may the God of your hope, this is from the Amplified, may the God of your hope, <coughs> excuse me, may the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. Glory to God. So, Father, I pray for the abounding hope, this lasting spirit of expectancy to rise up on the inside of the people in Living Glory Church. That, Father, that nothing can steal their hope. And that will be filled with the joy 
and peace in believing. And Father, I just thank you that there's a spirit of expectancy, a spirit of excitement rising back up into, the, into their minds, into their hearts, not just because of this message, but because of the Spirit of God that's in this place. And that that spirit of expectancy will begin to rise up. And Father, it'll give energy to their, to their prayer life. It'll give uh, life uh, to their actions in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that, that they will not be denied, that your plan for their life will come to pass. And so, Father, today I believe and I ask you to revive that spirit of expectancy, that, that heart of hope on the inside of the people of Living Glory Church. And I give you glory. And I give you honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you can say amen, you agree with that, say amen. amen. And so be it. And say this with me, Father, I thank you. Spirit of expectancy. A spirit of excitement. A spirit of anticipation. A revival of hope for your plan, for my life, for this church, for this city, in the name of Jesus, is rebirth in my heart, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Um, we have... Um, how many of you get the Word of Faith magazine from uh, Kenneth Hagen Ministries? If you, if you do not, well, if you do, uh, be sure you get this month's, ver this month's copy. Uh, there's an article about Pastor B and myself in this, along with uh, little Madeline Grace. Uh, it's a, a shelter from the storm. It, it's an article about Belinda and I. Uh, and then, huh? And and Living Glory Church, yeah. Uh, and and uh, how we got started and so forth. It's in there. If you do not get the Word of Faith, I believe that you can call them uh, or go online and request a copy of it. They're free. The magazines are free. Get a copy of it. Uh, it's it's an honor to be in this Word of Faith magazine, and and so uh, little Madeline Grace is is also in there. Uh, with her miraculous birth, and so we're excited uh, that we had the opportunity to be in there. And so get a copy of that if you'd like. And, and uh, in the bulletin, there is a, there is a little invitation. Uh, next Saturday, I want to say it's at 3 o'clock. Yeah, 3 o'clock next Saturday, there's a, a birthday party uh, for Madeline Grace. It's her first uh, birthday. It's her one-year birthday. Uh, if you don't know the story of Madeline Grace, she was born at uh, 24 weeks. Uh, she was 16 weeks premature and spent several months in the hospital, uh, but you wouldn't tell by looking at her now. Amen. Uh, God has brought her to the full circle, and we're so grateful for His mercy and our little miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you this morning that your hand is upon the people of Living Glory Church, that you surround them with your glory. You surround them, Father, uh, with your favor. And Father, I thank you that the blood of Jesus covers them, and they are protected from the thief. They're protected from the enemy. Uh, Father, your word says in Isaiah that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, and it shall not prosper in their, in, in their life, in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that everything to which they put their hand will prosper. That that you orchestrate in their life, Father, it will prosper in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. <laughs>